In today's video, I'm going over seven things Linux does better than Windows. So the very first thing that comes to mind when I think of Linux compared to Windows, where it's always coming out ahead, is stability. Linux is the most stable environment, especially when compared to Windows, because as a systems admin, I've heard of people having a server up for five or even 10 years without even a single reboot. Now I wouldn't advocate that, but it's still a thing. So when I say Linux is stable, keep that in mind. You can literally stay on one version of the kernel if it's in an isolated area with no internet access or something like that. That machine will probably run until you power it off or it has hardware failure. That is incredible because and that's something Windows can't touch. The second thing in kind of that same vein is it's extremely secure. Linux uh, is geared to be locked down environment by default. So what this means is when you install it and let's say a foreign app gets installed as well, it doesn't just immediately get super user access. You have to grant super user access to that app because you're not running as root. Um, there's ways to run as root, but you have to pretty much uh, log in as it and just really hack around. Nobody does it. Um, occasionally you'll see a t-shirt, you know, hey, I always run as root because it's a joke. <laughs> it's extremely insecure. Well, Windows by default has helped over the years with like user account control and some other things to help try and secure it down a little bit. But it's still a very, very unsecure operating system um, out of the box, where Linux out of the box is has all this locked down. So it's a very, very secure operating system. The third thing is Linux is open source where Windows is not. Now, Windows, you know, just a couple years ago, they created a backdoor for the NSA and some other shenanigans because there is no open source review. Now, in Linux, we, there's thousands of people looking at like the kernel drivers and other things that they can actually spot these things. It makes it a much more secure environment because everyone is double checking everyone else's work. So one person can't just make a rogue commit and, you know, at least in theory, you know, they should be able to check, check it. Um, not to say it's never happened or it never will happen but it's far less likely than when you have these closed source like Microsoft where it's just layered upon layers upon layers and there's no public review of that uh, source code because Windows has it all locked down and Microsoft. So uh, Linux is not like that, it's worldwide. It's a completely shared project where everyone uh, contributes to it. So it's not just one person in control or one company or entity. So the fourth reason here is compatibility. And some people are like, wait, wait, wait a second. Windows has more compatibility on third hardware and other stuff. That's not quite what I'm talking about here. Um, let's say you have an old laptop. Now that old laptop might run like XP or something like that. You can't really put a modern Windows on that old laptop. Well, you can revitalize it by installing Linux or a Linux flavor on it. And most distributions are pretty lightweight and they can easily handle this older hardware and actually run really, really smooth. Heck, I have an old netbook that I installed a lightweight version of Linux on and it runs fantastic. Where if I had Windows 7 or God forbid Windows 10 on it, it would just have a heart attack. And I don't think it would really even function just because of how under, underpowered it is. But Linux runs like a dream on it. The fifth reason is updates. You control the updates when it comes to Linux. You can say, hey, I wanna run this kernel for the next five years. I wouldn't recommend it for security reasons and other, other things, you know, there's patches that happen, but you have the option not to update. Good luck trying to get a Windows machine not to update, uh, especially on Windows 10. Now you can disable the Windows service, you can modify the system, you can do a lot of things in Windows, but you're pretty much hacking into it and changing its core functionality. By default, most people aren't doing these things and it will automatically download those updates and update itself, which if you're running older hardware, this can be a very bad thing because it can slow it down and cause all kinds of issues because of the age of the hardware. 
And the sixth reason is customization. You can do anything in Linux. You can change your file manager. You can change uh, what des desktop environment you're running and how the underlying system functions. Or if you just want to run it in terminal and not use any desktop environment, you can do that. You have all these options in Linux or Windows, you're always pigeonholed into one way of doing things. Yes, you can theme Windows, but I'm not talking about theming. I'm talking about overall functionality. You can customize Linux, and there's even distributions where you can take this to an extreme and only choose certain things. Heck, if you don't want to install the sound, you don't have to install a, a function to turn the sound up and down if you don't want to. So uh, Linux is extremely, extremely flexible and customizable, where Windows is kind of like a one-trick pony. Um, and, and one could argue that, hey, everyone knows Windows, and that's why it's, it's good. But uh, in my experience, once you learn how to customize Linux, most people can never go back to Windows just because of the power it gives you. And the final reason, it's free. It costs zero dollars. That's a heck of a lot better than going and shelling, you know, $130 or $200 for a professional version of Windows. Uh, Linux is free and a lot of the software is free as well. So I came from a workflow in Windows where I was using video editing software over there that was really expensive. And over here I'm using Caden Live, which was free. Uh, a lot of my audio editing and things like that also free. Audacity is free. Um, and these freeware equivalents were over on Windows to an extent, but um, almost everything on Linux has a free free alternative. Not to say there's no software available to it, because there is that you can go out and buy. You know, There's a couple come to mind, such as DaVinci Resolve, if you're want, needing that professional level of quality. But uh, in the end of the day, Linux is free and it's open to everyone. So those, those are my seven reasons why Linux is just so awesome and why it's uh, better than Windows or where it definitely outperforms Windows. So with all that said, if you haven't tried Linux, go ahead and give it a shot. Go try a uh, Linux Mint would probably be my recommendation for newcomers. And if you'd like to see my experience, I just moved to Linux desktop experience. I, I've experienced as far as the server aspect of Linux goes, but I just recently switched all my main PCs over to Linux and done the desktop experience. And I did a 30 day challenge, which if you check the card up here below, you can actually go to that and see the frustrations and things that have just drastically changed from Windows to Linux and what it takes to make that jump or that leap to Linux. Because now that I'm on it for, it's about two months, almost three months now, uh, I really, really enjoy it and I would never go back to Windows.